everybody, I'm Brian. Let's go do some woodworking. <laughs> So what I'm going to do here is this plane was used and put away a little bit damp in a tool bag with a bunch of other tools and uh, you can obviously see that it needs to be fixed up. So what I'm about to do applies to this plane and it applies to an old plane that you want to tune up and make work well. So I'm going to take this apart, put the plate aside because I don't need that. I'm going to clean it and I'm going to get all the rust off of it and true up the surfaces and re-oil them. Which is the same thing that you would want to do to an old Stanley or a Bailey or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the jointer and I'll clean the body of the plane and true up the surfaces, make them dead flat and get it looking spick and span again. So we'll go over there and do that. And I'm going to use three grades of sandpaper to do it. I have 400, 600, and the finest I had was 2,000. You could go 1,500 in between these would be nice, but this will do what we needed to do. So let's go over there and do that. Okay, so I've come over to the jointer here, and you could do this on any surface, just so long as it's flat. You can do it on a table saw, table over on a band saw, you can do it on a piece of granite in your kitchen, just so long as you're on a flat surface. That's what we're going for, is to get this surface nice and flat on the plane. This plane has an adjustable mouth, so it's a second piece of cast iron in there. I'm going to leave that on because I want everything to be flush. So I've got 400 grit, and I'm just going to flatten it. See the shine come up right away on that. This plane has milled sides on it that are square to the bottom, so I'm going to do the same thing on the sides. On an old hand plane, this can take a very long time because the bottoms will be warped and cupped. And uh, you can spend, you know, an hour doing this to get them truly flat. But it's worth the effort because the plane will operate a lot better once you've, once you've gotten it nice and flat. So that's 400 grit, and I'm going to use 600 grit and do the same thing again. And I don't want to go sideways because then I'll get a different scratch pattern and the steel. And just do it like it's a regular hand plane and planing a piece of wood sort of thing. Go to 2000. It's starting to get kind of shiny, which is nice. I'm calling that done. So you can see that the scratch pattern isn't even, but it's completely clean which is the important part, and I've hit all the surfaces, so I know it's flat. You can see here that there's a little bit of rust in the sides and these little divots, so we're going to go to the bench and clean that with a silicon abrasive. Okay, so here we have the different parts of the plane, and they all need a little tiny bit of work. But first, I want to get these divots clean on the side, so I have this silicon-based abrasive. I guess it's silicon with abrasive embedded inside of it, and this is a fine grade one. You can get them in different coarseness. So all I'm going to do is take that, okay, grind it into the divot, sort of spin it in there, clean, flip it over, there we go, that's done, I'm going to look at the end, there's a little bit, and inside there, I noticed that the back of my blade, which was formerly polished, has some scratching on it. So, I'm going to make sure this is clean, because I don't want any grit on there. So I'm going to go like that, make sure I've got anything that could be stuck on there off. Wipe it out. I'll go over to the compressor and take some compressed air and blow this off really, really well and get all of the chunks off so that no abrasive stays on the steel from the lapping process or the cleaning process. And that's kind of ready. I'm going to do something else to it here in a minute. I'll do my other part here. Do the same thing. I can see a little bit of surface rust on there. 
just want to clean it up a little bit. There's some marks on it, that's okay. I just don't want rust. That's good. Have a look at this. This is clean. I don't need to do anything there. Okay, so I'll blow this off with the compressor and we'll be right back. So I've got all my parts clean. I'm going to use this product, which is called Waxalit, sold by Lee Valley. There's many different products that do the same thing. In fact, you can use an old candle. It doesn't really matter. It's a rust inhibitor. I think there's something called camellia oil. You can use that. So I'm going to open this up. I keep a little rag inside of here. Get some on it. And I'm going to put some on the plane surfaces that I just cleaned. Okay, I got some on there. I'll get a little on the blade too. So it looked like on the back there was some marks on there. So just keep corrosion from setting in again. So this is also very good. And then I'll wipe it off, get rid of the wax. Now I'm going to take some 3-in-1 oil. And I'm just going to make sure everything is nicely lubricated. You don't want to put a ton of oil on the plane because you don't want to get oil on the wood surface you're working on. So you want enough on here for it to work nicely, but you don't want so much that it's going to drip out of the plane. Okay, that fits pretty good. A little tiny bit on the bottom. Okay, so I have everything waxed and oiled and maybe mostly clean, some stuff on here still, but hey, it's a tool it's for using. The adjusting mechanism you can see is moving nicely. So what this one does is it changes the angle of the blade by twisting it. So you can see that once you put this in here, that it twists the blade to straighten it on the surface of the wood. And it also adjusts the depth of cut by going in and out. So that's working well, everything's running smoothly. This I use sometimes, not too often. You loosen off the uh, little knob at the front and then you can change the opening on the mouth there according to what you're doing. If it's really figured wood you can close that up, and, uh, keep it really super tight and it'll prevent breakout a little bit on the grain, tear out. So everything seems to be working good and I'm going to go ahead and sharpen the blade before I completely put this back together again.